Howdy, this is Scott Lacey, an athlete with the Crosscut Mountain Sports Center's Elite Biathlon team, and I'm coming from the road this week to show you a bunch of strength and stability exercises you can improvise while on the road. As you can see, I'm here in an Airbnb at some races up in Vermont, and we're improvising because we traveled here in suitcases, and we don't have a weight room, and we don't have a lot of standard medicine balls or BOSUs or the things that I've mentioned in past videos that I love, <coughs> but we can still do an enormous amount of those exercises from scratch improvising here in this hotel. I hope you enjoy. To begin any strength or stability workout, I like to begin with a solid warm up. This doesn't hugely vary whether you're in Airbnb, in a hotel, or in a gym, or in a park. So we'll just do what I normally do, which is a ton of Warming up of the body, really begin with cardinal stretches, each side of the body. Open up your chest. You spend a lot of time on airplanes or computers or remote working, closing up. Nordic is closing. Really open the body. Do mobility, set your shoulders behind you. Inhale up, exhale your shoulders back. Drop your hands. You can do any variation on your arms or upper body. Ultimately, you're trying to create rotation in the spine, warming up your rib cage, warming up your low back, a lot of sitting, a lot of laying on hotel beds. Moving into hips, really find your range of motion. Realize that maybe you sit with your legs crossed often and that reduces mobility in one side or the other. See if you can really open your hip sockets, switch directions. Always make sure to go both directions. It can tell you a lot of information about your current state. Maybe you need to work on one side or the other. Really stretch those hamstrings. You can find any variation. Maybe you prefer yoga style movement or just simple hangs, things like that. I like to do some alpine turning, work out the hips and the knees together and the ankles, work on your ankle mobility. Lift up, go to your heels, go to the left side, go to the toes, go to the right side of your feet come back to the opposite direction. Maybe it's a hardwood floor and that's a little uncomfortable. Maybe you can put down a towel and find that warm up. Get nice and loose. You spend a lot of time sitting in vans, airplanes, laying on beds when you're on the road. One super easy tool to carry while you're on the road, takes up no space, isn't very heavy, simple elastic bands. They come in different weights. I prefer kind of a mid-weight one because I can always double it up and have twice as much. Or maybe I just did a race and I'm kind of tired and I'm just throwing in a little strength in the afternoon of the race. So I keep it nice and loose with just one level of the band. The great things about having a long one, you can do any number of things. You can tie it into a loop. Good knot tying practice with a rubber band. And this allows you to do all of the things you would normally do in a gym. Lots of Glute work. One of my favorites is the half moon. Get that nice fundamental athletic position, really building stability in your hip and your knee. You spend a lot of time gliding on one leg. Make sure to even it out. This is nice, especially if you have hardwood floors. You don't need to have so much balance. You can really just work on the muscles itself. Moving up, nice knee stability, squat warm ups. Still kind of a warm up, but moving more into the strength. If you have a bathroom or a mirror, you can make sure that you're nice and level, you're not favoring one leg. And then I like to move into the hips. Sometimes doorknobs are a little flimsy, really test the door, but you can use a doorknob to do something. I actually need to make this a little bit bigger. All right, I made the band a little bit bigger, hooked it to the doorknob as you can see. This isn't super strong of a band, so I'm not super worried about that. And then this allows you to really practice some motions of 
getting your hips forward. Oftentimes we'll be out skiing, we'll start skiing a ton, we spend less time in the gym on the road. So this allows you to really re-familiarize yourself with some of those explosive movements we've worked on all summer that you don't really do in the winter. I like to start with just a double pull, and this really brings awareness to my hips. Get them up. Sometimes if you're on a hardwood floor, you can kind of slide, really practice like you're on that ski erg that you don't really travel with. And then all of a sudden you get off the doorknob, you can go and really experience experience that motion, maybe even jump out on skis, see how it goes. We've done ankles, knees, hips, moving into upper body. I'm a huge believer in scap activation, scapulas, back of your body, doing exercises, pulling this. This is also inadvertently core stability. Anchor your body, fundamental athletic position. Make sure to even it out. Maybe you're a kayaker like me and you've done a lot of shoulder damage. So you can do warm ups to really activate the rest of your shoulder. Or even just do this if you don't really trust the doorknob. But really get your body moving. At this point, we're nice and warmed up. We're ready for some other exercises. Moving on can do a lot with this band. I like to do some stability exercises. A lot of my other videos have shown this already, but this is standing on one leg. I'm gonna go ahead and just double wrap this. Fundamental athletic position, move to one leg. And you can now really start to work on these motions. You could even, if you wanted to do some double pull explosive motion, you could kneel. Again, you could put down a towel if it's too hard of a floor and really practice. Always even it out. Or if you really need a challenge, as I've mentioned, put on some nice clean socks, Maybe you don't have too much on the floor, but you can really improvise a BOSU here standing on a pillow. Now all of a sudden I don't have this solid foundation. Now I'm moving all around. You can grab these after adequate warm up and really make sure you're working on that fundamental stability. Also, you're doing some explosion in your upper body balance. You can even it out. If you know me, I love tennis balls. I travel with them everywhere. You can do an enormous amount of exercises with these. I just want to throw it in that, of course, you could find a nice wall in your house, do those drills on automaticity and, and coordination. Skiers often are phenomenal athletes, but the general athleticism of hand-eye coordination or foot-eye can always benefit a skier in any way. And do these exercises, one leg, both legs, hit the window trim and have it bounce oddly, extra challenge. <laughs> or go out skiing as my favorite exercise in the automaticity, ditch your poles, ski with a buddy and toss it back and forth while skiing and you're out there gliding and you're building those stability and balance systems into the automatic part of your brain you don't have to think about it then you're out on the race course someone crashes in front of you difficult terrain ridge from the groomer you're not even thinking about it you're skiing you're skiing hard all right moving more into a harder strength routine we've done a warm-up we've done a lot of stability and activation we've worked on our coordination now it's time to really get into some some true strength i love stairwells super versatile in this case, I'm gonna take off my socks because I ate crap earlier sliding on the wood. Make sure you have something grippy on your feet, if it's a hardwood or if it's carpet. And now you can start to do great drills. This could be broad jumps, single leg hops, or anything. Currently, I'm working a little bit on power and explosion. So I like to do the classic jumps, really working on 
those motions, or if you want to work on it skate-wise, you could really work on getting up and off that leg. As any good skier knows, we do a lot of core strength. Core is really the largest group of muscles in our body and we can deliver an enormous amount of power and we can build endurance into those muscles. It helps to ski a lot, go out for a nice multi-hour double pull, one of my favorites. I always feel like a very powerful skier after that. But when we're in a hotel room, we don't always have the conditions. Here we're on a 2K loop for the week and it's really being saved for the races. So we have to improvise some ways to really add power to our strength here in the hotel. You can always lay a towel on the floor if you don't travel with a yoga mat or it's hardwood and it's difficult to do planks and things like that on your elbows. But you can also find things to improvise. Here, we have a wood stove in this house and everything's wood, so there's a fire extinguisher. This thing's nice and heavy. I would guess about 20 or 25 pounds. And so you can pad your butt or even do balance exercises. Start with just doing some strength any old routines you got, but you don't have medicine balls because who's going to travel with a medicine ball when you're checking it on the airplane? Or even if it is an easy to toss object, you could do partner strength tossing or the classic. Load up a big ski backpack. Every skier travels with a backpack that's enormous. Put some heavy things in here. I've gotten all the books I can in the house. You could put the fire extinguisher in there, pad it with clothing, and then you could do any number of weighted exercises you want. Do some nice weighted squats, do some power to velocity, take it off. I'm not gonna hit the ceiling, but then do some explosion motions if you like, or simply add it to any old thing. Everyone loves a good weighted plank. If you're doing some other types of core, this is one of my favorites. When you do have a hardwood floor, put some socks on, protect your elbow. You can really do things you can't quite do in the gym where everything's grippy. Get into a nice side plank, do your warm up, and then you can really work on some explosion, some motions that we don't quite do all summer or any variation. Improvise. It's pretty awesome to think of all the things you can do when really the fundamental motion is engaging your core, creating stability, adding complexity to your weight, and then building on those. It doesn't take a gym. It doesn't take a nice park. It doesn't take a fancy training facility. All of these things can be done on the road. I love to travel with simple things. I have plenty of weight in my gear. I have a backpack, which creates weight. I travel with a simple elastic band that's hugely versatile. I take advantage of staircases. I take advantage of fire extinguishers. I take advantage of water jugs, whatever you have around the house. And it's kind of fun to improvise. I hope I've shown that through all videos and shown today a great way to use simple things around the house in a way you might not have thought of before. And even if you're not a skier, these are great, great ways to just maintain general fitness and stability. Again, these help with alpine skiing, whether you're kayaking or you're out on a trip hiking, all of these things come in handy. I hope you've enjoyed this video on improving strength while on the road. I hope you're all on the road enjoying a great winter. Hope to see you on the trails. Once again, this is Scott Lacey with the CrossFit Mountain Sports Center's Elite Biathlon team signing off. Happy holidays.